Welcome back to the post show. This week we talk about Tokyo Revengers, episode 22, before Grant starts talking about what we do in the shadows, since I believe the third season just dropped of that show. I then give my quick review of Usual Suspects, since that's the movie I watched this week, before we get into a long-winded conversation about Sunny Boy, now that Grant has finally caught up on that. Following Sunny Boy, I give my early review of Odd Taxi, now that I'm two or three episodes in, before talking about Haruki Murakami, Japanese author, and uh, my thoughts now that I've finished the Rat series. We end the episode on Grant gushing about Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid and its beautiful animation. Thank you guys so much for listening. Enjoy. Oh, hey there, Frain. Hey, Dave. Mm. How you doing, sir? Oh, I'm good. What are you Podcast. doing? I am drinking, uh, very out of character, a hard cider. You're very excited about it. Yeah, I, I don't... Uh, I could tell because you came right up to the mic to tell me. <laughs> yeah, I have uh, I have one of these a year, maybe. <laughs> um, and they're nice. Still, it's refreshing. I'm having a ABC... That's mm. Ashton Brewing Company. We've we've spoken about them before. Blueberry wheat. Mmm. I want to try that. You shall. You know what's funny though? As I was saying that, I was thinking to myself, like, God, I'm so he- tired of listening to douchebags tell me about what beers they're drinking. Mm. <laughs> have you ever have you ever seen that uh, meme? Um, it's Will Smith. I think it might be Fresh Prince of Bel Air, or it might actually be Men in Black two very different things but it's a meme of will smith he's eating or drinking something and making a disgusted face but trying to smile like he's trying to pretend whatever he's having is tastes good and then the caption Mm. is like ipa drinkers trying to pretend (laughs) their beer is good (laughs) (laughs) yeah um yeah that's not not how i feel but it's also how i feel yeah I don't get the whole IPA thing. I mean, whatever, no. fine. It's a, it's a, a discussion for another time. Mm-hmm. Um, how you doing? Good. Yeah. Been. Uh, I. I <clears throat> I've been doing some anime watch, a specific anime watching this week, and I have been very, very uh, looking forward to talk about it Interesting. with you. Um, I was um, out of town for like the third, not consecutive, but three out of the four last weekends. I've been out mm-hmm. of town. Um, but this time I got back and I mean, there's no real way to say it without like being too, too vague, Mm. but I was just like so depleted and hung over and exhausted. Mm. Like we're, we're getting older. Right. And, uh, doesn't take much anymore. (laughs) Doesn't take much. And I, you know, um, we had the labor day, I had the Monday off anyway. Mm. Um, so it's not, you know, I didn't, (laughs) I didn't have any plans, other than doing a whole lot of chilling sure so that was where i ingested most of my anime uh consumption for the week but what i will tell you is in that state a lot of it just sort of washes over you like sure we were talking about on the my hero podcast just brief uh, a few minutes ago and you guys should go listen to that if you haven't already but uh sometimes like scenes of shows just wash over you it's like Mm. if the show isn't super engaging um, or if it's a little bit blah, it's just like you don't take it in. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, when you're not in the headspace to take a lot of stuff in and the show isn't doing a great job, it's like it's like not having watched it at all to begin with. A hundred percent. Especially if it's a show you really, really care for or you want to give it its due, but yeah. you're just in that state where you, know, you have no investment, no... Um, energy investment that you can give it you know your eyes at that point are the only thing that are working and then even then they're drifting (laughs) and i gotta say anime is totally different it presents completely different challenge because of the subs yeah if you know if you're an anime quote purist not to be that guy but sure we do have an anime podcast so give me a break (laughs) (laughs) most people that watch a lot of anime watch it with subtitles yeah Uh, there are notable exceptions death note full metal that are like well regarded for their dubs Mm -hmm. But, like, most people watch most animes subbed. But, like, if you're half dead and want to fall asleep to something, you can't do that. Like, you, I mean, you can, Mm -hmm. but, like, you're not going to take anything in because you got to be awake enough to read the subtitles. Yeah. Anyway, first world problem. Um, (laughs) (laughs) How do you want to start? Let's just... 
<clears throat> let's just dive right into Tokyo Avengers because there's 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 bigger stuff I want to talk about this week, and this is not. Let's get this yeah. shit out of the way. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I think we finally wrapped up this arc. This, yeah, I think so. This bloody Halloween arc. I I really don't know how many episodes we have left, but I think. You know, we had those two borderline atrocious episodes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> we had that god awful t- first ten minutes, and then kind of like a saving grace episode. I think this was very much a return to form for the show. Yeah. Uh, um, the show is at its best when it's allowing the characters just to be young, because mm-hmm. yeah, that's what it is. This, this is this is pre all the Tomon stuff, right? So yeah. it's they can kind of just. You know, they're all hard asses. They're all tough. Like, they're 12 year old. It's, not, it's so funny. Like, Leanna again was like, How old are these guys? <laughs> like, this is predominantly a flashback episode, right? Yeah. I think they're all 12 years old, 12, 13. But, you know, it's, you know, it's just like they all have love for one another and they care for each yeah. other. And, and it was really powerful because the moments they cut to, you know, because that's the thing, too, because there's that Pachin guy who we've seen a little bit. He had his beef with Ta- Takamichi earlier in the season. At the time, we didn't realize how, like, big a deal he was. And that's oh, the crazy man. thing. Like, he was, like, a kind of an antagonist. And then when he's well and gone, we realize, like, how major and pivotal of a character he is. Yeah. So he kind of gets some closure, too, or, like, they'll kind of talk. And then just the whole thing where Mikey kind of more or less forgives Kazutora. And it's, it's sort of it, like the climax of the episode. The climax, but it it worked. It really worked. Like it, I actually found it for an arc that I fucking not hated, but it was just like I think everyone was kind of just like, "What are we watching here?" Yeah. Totally. Um. It was actually surprising, like really emotional, and I I I bought it. I was like, "Oh yeah, like he, I I think he does forgive him. and you can see it in Casatora, and you know what, what about you? I, I've done all the talking here on it, but uh, how how do you feel about it? Well. I thought it was a pretty good episode. Um, I agree with you that I think we're done with this arc. Well, mm. I mean, I don't like it. They said it in pretty certain terms. Um, it was a bloody Halloween. It, they're like, yeah. So anyway, that <laughs> Halloween was bloody. Um, it like it's tricky because, man, have you? I don't know if you like if you see this shit on social. It is so fucking popular. Like mm. the manga sales are like, I don't know if it was sales or ratings but they're beating like attack on titan and certain certain metrics and like mm. they're surpassing all these things i think it's an age uh, age range thing i think it's a demographic thing and also every manga gets bigger when it gets an anime um so that's all like well and good but it's mm. an extremely big show yeah um and to have like frankly such a letdown of a climax uh for a pretty important arc was like really just a letdown it left a really bad taste in my mouth i'm excited to see where the show goes from here at the end of the day takemichi was successful um again yeah so like he did his job that was good um it was just frustrating at times but i think that's part of the charm of the show um sure so i'm really excited to flash forward to the future and see what happens but i think we talked about this like last week as well if if we go back and we have some semblance of peace for 10 minutes and then it's like okay now this other thing happens like i don't know i don't want to do that forever i need no something else to happen like maybe we save hina's life permanently but there are unforeseen consequences maybe something happens to the kid that is able to send takemichi back or I, I don't know, like, get, you know, like, let's change up the formula a little bit, because it takes so long to see if we can affect the future, because if there's 22 episodes, I'd say 20 of them take place in the past, mm-hmm. and two of them are seeing what we've affected in the future, right? Mm-hmm. It takes, a, there's a long lead time to see if Ta- Takemichi is effective at all. Mm-hmm. So let's not reset the clock and be like, okay, time for another 10 episodes, because this time... We've got to save Chifu's life. Because if he dies, then Mikey's going to go crazy for a different reason. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I want um, the show to move into a, um, a you know, a, to, to mature a little bit or evolve a little bit. But I was satisfied. Like, I'd agree with you. This was, like, a better episode than the last. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I want to see I want to see a bit of growth. Is that, like, too critical? I, I don't know. 
No, I, I think it's, you know, if other people in the, like, I'm not trying to say, like, we have, like, the de facto opinion on this, on this show right now, but it just, there's just, you know, it's hard, like, there's so many other shows, and I, you can't give it, I, I can't give it an inch, because there's other shows that are doing similar things, and they're not doing stupid shit like this, you know, yeah, it's, man. it's so, it's like, it's like, come on, like, figure it out, if you're such a big deal, be a big deal, yeah. you know what I mean, like, it's, Anyway, like I said, I, I think there's the emotions, and that's like the whole big thing, big theme of the show is like the crybaby hero and all that, and just like the adolescent emotions is a huge theme yeah. running, you know, like whether, you know, it's just love, you know, love for another human being or, you know, friendship, you know, male friendship, and like there's a, there's a lot of good stuff that they hit home, there's very positive things that they mm-hmm. hit home, and if there is a younger audience watching this show, I hope they take that away. Or I hope, I hope that's something they take away from it. Mm. And this episode, I think, was one of the best instances of showing care for another and, like, not judging by a book by its cover and, you know, companionship and loyalty and, like, in every... Because, like, there's the three arcs of the episode. There's the, the ending climax stuff where everyone kind of, like, we're, okay, we're all friends again. There's Chifuyu meeting Baji and building that relationship. And then... You know, there's all like just all the stuff leading up to it of like all them as young, the forming of Tomon, which I think was super powerful, and mm-hmm. you know, kind of like how you know just the way that Tomon was just created because you know I think it was Kazutoro originally was getting mm-hmm. picked on. Yep. You know, it, and Baji was like, "Why don't we start a gang and defend our boy?" You know, it's 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 where I like to see the show, and it's like humble fuck. beginnings, right? And it all yeah. came from a really good natured place. Yeah. I agree. That part was really great, seeing yeah. how they started. But it's just, it's so confusing to me that the two episodes that were just plain stinkers had all of the same elements, but they just chose not to do it. You mm-hmm. know, it, it's like they say, you know, maybe it was a situation where if they had spread out evenly, everything would have just been brought down a notch versus like, yeah. not great, not great, okay, pretty good, you know, like, or it could have just been like, okay, across the board. You know, people that decide how that works, you know, the showrunners and whatnot, or yeah. maybe it's just based off the source material and it's just as clunky like that in the manga. Who knows? I'm sure people would, you know, <laughs> scream to heaven saying that's not the case because I know there's a very loyal and vocal fan base for mm-hmm. for the manga. Um, I don't see it so much for the show, but anytime I see anything about the manga, people are like steadfast. Yeah, it's you huge. know, it's huge. yeah, interesting. And I think you're right too. Like, um, just about your point about. There being so much on right now, um, this was almost on the same release schedule, or it was, as Two Year Eternity, mm-hmm. and like you're up against Two Year Eternity. Um, you know, there's shows this year like uh, Odd Taxi. You know, there's the Demon Slayer show or movie that came out. Like, it's just like a tough time, <laughs> yeah, to put something out. Sunny Boy just started. You know what I mean? And to be cutting corners uh, is tricky. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm interested to see where it goes, especially the next arc. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, you know, this is like, I'm nowhere near like done with the show or anything like that. I would just, like I said, I want to see some growth, right? Um, okay, that was Tokyo. What do you got? So Give me something well, new. So, you want something new? Okay. Yeah. So, um, one of mine and Leanna's favorite shows uh, came back last Thursday. Um, have you watched ever watched before whether it's the movie or the show what we do in the shadows oh the uh the is the vampire a, show yeah didn't taiko atiti do the movie well he was like he was in i think he directed the movie yeah. and then he was like he was very heavily involved in the first two seasons of, of the okay. show yeah i uh, i knew about the movie i've seen the movie i believe maybe not Oh, um, I, I, one, I know the one of my all time favorites. <laughs> I, I know the movie was very, very well received, and was actually like instrumental in like getting him moving and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't know there was a show. Oh, Dave, bar none. So, you know, like I'm not saying this is an original. A lot of people like comedy shows, but like Leanne and I just love watching a smart comedy. You mm-hmm. know, um, this show is. And it's not even a problem I have with the show. I think it's a good thing to have. It's a good problem to have. I laugh so hard and so often in a single episode, I miss so much shit. 
Like it's just really? it, it, it's like Joe. It's like it's like Veep. It's like uh, you know, The Office is different because it was cringy. So like you had those moments that you laughed out loud on, but Lots like of beats, yeah. they they gave it time to breathe. Yeah. You know, what we do in the shadows is not like that. It's very much like Veep. It's like, bam, 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 bam. It's like, holy fuck. Like, it's just, <laughs> you've been rocked in the head, like, a few times. Like, it's just, it's unrelenting in the jokes. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's it's just one of those shows where, other than the main, one, one of the main characters, I had never seen anyone in the show. Um, they're pretty much unknowns at the time when we had first started watching it. We knew Matt Berry. He was in the IT crowd. And like to- that, Toast of London, you're giving me IT grad vibes just based off what you said. Well, it's the same thing. Like it's you can definitely it's in, like that it's that genre of comedy, right? Like it's very kind of absurdist, but yeah. simultaneously grounded. Like it's a show about vampires in Long Island, and it's one of the most grounded shows I've ever seen. Like it just the universe, it's like it's just the, works, eh? it's just the regular world is still going on around them, but they're just they just happen to be fucking vampires. Like you know, there's. Yeah, it's 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 just fucking hilarious, where, man. Where do you watch it? It's on FX. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. How many? Like, so you said uh, Taika Waititi was involved in the first couple of seasons. So how many are there? Is this the third? Uh, so this, the third season just started last week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. It's uh, we've been. This is one of the shows. Like all. Like it feels like every couple of weeks is like. Is what we do the shadows up soon? No. Okay. All right. And then we check back with each other. Like, okay, when's when's that coming on? It's like, ah, yes. Like, we're in September. Fucking a. <laughs> like, you know, Shadows is back on. But um, just so funny, so genuine, so creative writing too. Like, they, you know, it, it's nice because, you know, it's not like um, I'm trying. I don't watch too much horror TV, but it kind of. It's it's almost like sixty percent comedy, forty percent horror. Like it's not over the top, but they have moments that it reminds you of like, yes, this is a show about like undead monsters, and they do shit like this. So it's I don't know, it's very out there, and it's kind of like curb your enthusiasm in a way. Like the jokes they do, they kind of just go there sometimes. Interesting. And it's like, oh, they're really going there. <laughs> you know, they're they're going to make that comment. It's just it's like um like fish out of water stories nine times out of ten. Um, so it's. You know, it's it's just a great show. Like, if you like fast-paced comedy and, uh, you know, just kind of vul- like kind of vulgar, you know, but like not overused and all that. But like Matt Berry, who, you know, he plays the the character Laszlo, just all time, all Which time one comedy. Was Matt Berry in uh, IT Crowd. He was. Um, so I think he came in the second season. He was like the president of the company's son, oh, and okay. he shows up and he takes over. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and he talks the exact same way. Like it's just it's just like his his de facto character voice that he does. But nice. uh, yeah, um, what we do in the shadows. Okay. Yeah. So uh, did the episode uh, or did that season recently start in the last little while? Like how many? How far are they? So it came out last Thursday, and they released two episodes nice. um, for season three, which I think I find you see that a lot more, especially with comedies. They kind of it's not yeah. techni- like the episodes have nothing to do with one another, but they kind of just premiered as like an hour long, you know, season premiere kind of thing, which yeah, is kind of yeah, cool. Yeah. Oh, okay, just like back to back. Okay, yeah, that's pretty sick. Man, I had no idea about that. Uh, oh, it's I super highly like you love comedy, and it's just you know it's. Like I said, the it's just so funny. It's so British, and so it, it's like you know it's set in America, but it's very much like our kind of humor that we're used to. Like you know, it's it, it like it seems obvious, but like you know, we're, it doesn't really matter. But like the whole Commonwealth thing, like I find the Canadian and in English or in, and or sorry British and like even like Australian and, and New Zealand the humor that comes out of those countries are all kind of very similar. Mm-hmm. They all come from very deadpan and kind of grim, not quite black, like dark humor, Yeah, but just very deadpan. Yeah. And just, it just shines through the show. Like, you know, it's, they're yelling without yelling. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah it's fine. I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to check that out. Um, just that kind of humor, I think is, is really, really good. And that movie did really, really well. Mm. Um, I had no idea that was a thing. Okay, I'm definitely going to check that out. Um, while we're in this area uh, of live action, I'm just going to mention very quickly the movie I watched last week um, was The Usual Suspects. How'd you like it? Um, I, 
I liked it. I can't remember the name of the movie. Uh, what was the Ed Norton Richard Gere movie I watched a few weeks ago? Primal Fear. Primal Fear. Um, so similarly '90s, like mm. um, you know, I'm sure, like maybe in a decade, we're gonna look at the movies being made today, um, and like maybe just like the cinematography and the soundtracks and the character tropes are all gonna blend together, mm-hmm. and we'll be like, oh, like see, you can tell, like in the early 2020s, everyone was doing this particular thing. Mm-hmm. Like, we're too in it now to notice, but like, man, like these movies are like carbon copies of themselves. It's fucking weird. Um, especially because in the moment they were so successful. Kevin Spacey won Best Supporting Actor for this and it won Best Original Screenplay. Mm -hmm. Um, Two Oscars for a movie in which you could see every twist coming. (laughs) Like, (laughs) you know, like the the obvious thing is like, it wasn't obvious at the time, right? Yeah, it was was a big deal at the time. It was an incredibly huge deal at the time. In fact, it was the reason Spacey got like huge and it's why they didn't market him for being the villain in uh, David Fincher's Seven, mm. because he had just won an Oscar for being a villain uh, in uh, in uh, in this, but yeah, you can see. Whoops, that was a spoiler. But you know, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> came out ninety five. Yeah, you're um, a couple years late. <laughs> so, yeah, it, I don't know, man. It, it's weird. It's I think it's one. It this experience of like nineties movies is both nostalgic and some kind and sometimes discouraging do, do you know what i mean because yeah it's like, absolutely i remember growing up on star wars the originals uh with my dad he was like you have to understand at the time you know like this stuff had literally never been done before but you know i had no frame of reference because i was five sure yeah, <laughs> so yeah. those watches are still incredibly nostalgic to me and i love it every bit as much as he does um, but these things, like when I, I've used this example before, but it applies to Primal Fear and it applies to usual sp- suspects. It's like the Blade Runner problem. It's like the original Blade Runner. Like I understand that at the time this had never been done before, but I'm seeing it 30 years or 20 years removed. And now not only has it been done before, it has influenced these movies. Like they did it better. That. Or, to, well, you, you know, know what that, I mean. yeah. movies that I grew up watching to such a degree that it feels like I've seen it already. Sure. So it's like none of this is new to me. I understand that it was new to the general public at the time of release, but like it sort of makes me think that you can't go and appreciate classics sometimes mm-hmm. because they influence things around them so heavily that like it's just sort of lost on you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I remember I read some reviews for Usual Suspects, and this thing blew people out of the fucking water, man. And I'm like, this is like every heist movie. Like, it's every, you know, like, it's fine. And I, I get it. it. It was new at the time. But I watched Reservoir Dogs for the first time a few years ago. And that shit was crazy. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just tricky. Well, it, it, it is tricky because, you know, they're, they're of the time. But the tone is also significantly different in those two movies. Like, yeah. not, not, to, not to go against what you said. But, like, I will say, I remember the first time I, like, the only time I've watched The Usual Suspects. It was the first time where, you know, in a similar phase, not phase, but, like, what you're doing now, you're trying to go back and watch all these older movies. Yeah. And you're trying to see, you know, stuff that you've missed. And I, I did that, you know, same thing years ago. And I was just obsessed with movie, these major, like, you know, top 100 movies that I had missed. Like, mm-hmm. you know. And so I went for The Usual Suspects. And it was the first one after I had watched a few where I was kind of like, oh, like... Not everything is great to everyone. Yeah. You know, like, it's like you see it, you understand it's a big deal. The reveal is like, oh, yeah, baby, that would have knocked people's socks off at the time. But as I'm seeing it now, it's not really doing anything for me. Yeah. Like, you know, but you can still, you can still watch it. Like, I, I have the same, have you ever heard, you know, the movie Easy Rider? It has, uh, like, Jack Nicholson, oh, yeah. uh, Peter Fonda. Yeah. Um, I think Dennis Hopper. Like, it's, it's an all time classic. It's one of the greatest movies ever made. I cannot get through it to save my life. You know, it's really? just it's just, it's just a classic, and I know I see it. I'm watching it. And I'm like, oh, this is like, I bet you this influence all this stuff and da da da. And it's just, but I watch and it's like, I am good. Like I, you know, it's yeah. it's like the same thing. I've seen the influences that it's you know it's been on, and I've seen. I don't need to watch this now. Like I'm, I can move on and watch other things. You know. Yeah, man. Like it's, it's it's tricky, and I mean, I this is already like a not fair argument. 
but I, I, I want to just put this out there. For one thing that went against this movie is um, is the Oscars, right? Mm. Like, the Oscars, we've talked about them before. I think we covered it briefly, actually, um, about how they're no guarantee of, of quality, um, but they mm. are, you know, they are often pretty reliable in showing you what some of the most critically acclaimed films of the year are, mm-hmm. while simultaneously being political um, without be, really being able to avoid being political. And that's fine. Um, but I, I think about this movie winning Best Supporting Actor and Best Screenplay. And I was like, man, like, I don't know. I think about Best Supporting Actor and I think like J.K. Simmons and Whiplash. Mm. And then I look at what Kevin Spacey did in this. And I was like, 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 these guys aren't even the same species. Like, Kevin Spacey's, you know, despite everything that happened, like, he, want, he ended up winning an Oscar for American Beauty. And that was like an Oscar caliber performance. Mm. This is just like a guy with a twist at the end. Yeah, it's like how could oh yeah, but yeah, you should definitely watch American Beauty. Oh yeah, Um, best or best screenplay. You know, Tarantino Hmm. won it for Pulp Fiction. This one best screenplay before that. It's like Hmm. I don't know. Uh, Obviously, I don't think people in the '90s were having that conversation because like some Oscar wins age better than others. Sure. Um, But I just remember being like, oh, this is a big one. Like this is up there. You know, like '90s movies like Pulp Fiction, fucking Shawshank, Green Mile. You know what I mean? Mm Because that's what people said. And they're like, this doesn't feel like that at all. Yeah. This is, uh, this was a miss for me. Um, like, I'm not being, uh, I don't want to be too critical. I think, like, in my, in my notes, I wrote down, like, this was, like, a seven. But a seven is a serious letdown when, like, cinemaphiles are like, this is a must-watch for me, like. Mm. Yeah, I seriously. You know what I mean? It's, it's, has some of the essence of the 90s. I'm like, well, if that's the bar. (laughs) (laughs) you hit your nuts on it <laughs> like yeah um okay that was the usual suspects and me uh hating things uh so what, what what what's coming down the pipe next for what's the next movie what is the next movie uh let me vamp for 10 seconds you uh da, 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 da. Ooh, i'm gonna try this is um not necessarily i'm trying to think if this is 90s or not true romance yeah uh christian slater um, who else is in tr- uh, True Romance? I think Tarantino actually wrote True Ma- True Romance. Yes. Uh, but he or did he write, write True Lies? There's True Romance. Uh, but he didn't... Uh, I'm 99% sure. But he didn't direct it. This was like before he was a writer-director. He wrote this. Mm. I forget who directed it. Um, but I think I'm going to give uh, True Romance a shot. And if not, depending just like kind of on the mood and whatnot, I might try it being John Malkovich. Oh, I've, I haven't seen either of those movies. They're both like re- relatively well regarded, um, and if uh, anybody out there has '90s movies that you want me to check out, definitely uh, let me send know. Them along. Let me know which one you plan on watching for sure, mm-hmm. and maybe see if I can put some time away this week oh, and, that could be and, fun. and give that a watch. Do a joint review. Yeah, an, an old '90s movie one neither of us seen. That'd be fun. Yeah, man. There, there's some good ones. Um, maybe I'll, I'll look and I'll like send you my list. Uh, they're not all '90s ones. True Romance oh, yeah. is on there. Fatal Attraction, Clockwork Orange. I haven't seen any of those either. Oh, that's fine. There you go. Ghost in the Shell, yeah. I haven't seen. Fear I've seen and, that. Yeah. Uh, Fear and Loathing Las Vegas. I don't know if that's nope. 90s. Uh, uh, Half Baked. That's true. Um, Half yeah. Baked. Yeah. Like Dave Chappelle? Yeah. Yeah. Never saw it. No, no. Lots of classics. Hmm. Uh, just, you know, life, right? And like just being in, in between generations sometimes. Sure. Um, I think you just miss a lot of stuff. I remember like being in my office where there were age uh, gaps all over the place and you'd constantly hear people like every second sentence is you haven't seen office space <laughs> it's like give me a break <laughs> because so much of like the older yeah. uh crowd at my office like so many of our jokes and like stuff that's baked into our company culture is based off of office space mm-hmm. you get all these young people who are like what that's a great movie <laughs> but then, yeah, but everyone, like, all the young people are like, this isn't Pineapple Express. <laughs> <laughs> also a great movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this isn't funny. I don't get it. Somebody has a case in the Mondays. Man, it's dry. as yeah. dry gets. is out of space. I love that. 100%. Uh, okay. Over to you, my good friend. Dave, I fucking did it. Uh... I am caught up on Sunny Boy. There we go. Yeah. Caught up on Sunny Boy. So what, the episode, what, eight? Eight, yeah. Nice. And how do you feel, my friend? I got a lot of thoughts in my in my old in my old think box. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's how about, it's been a, I, it's 
I was I, gonna say, can I sum it up and say it's a lot? <laughs> Dave, I watched I watched uh, seven episodes in one night. Oh my god! Of Sunny Boy, and it was, was it a psychedelic experience? Man, it I was just, <laughs> just visual visual tripping on that. It was um the only thing I, I it's it's been stuck in my mind is you you had said there was a moment that there was like a 50 50 chance i just would not like and i'm curious what you thought that was oh sure okay so uh to the listener we're really hot on sunny boy uh, and they're up to episode eight now so spoiler warning well you know i don't even know if we could talk about the plot if we wanted to because who knows we're gonna f- try who knows what the <laughs> fuck is going on in this show but but spoiler alert for for everything up to episode eight so I think it's episode two or three. They spend, I want to say, 60% of an episode talking about invisible monkeys that play baseball. I fucking loved it. <laughs> it was that. <laughs> that was the one where on Reddit, I remember everybody was being like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, I was uh, I was very confused and uh, just all over the place. Yeah. So, <sighs> this show... This fucking show, I should say. <laughs> um, you know, I, I find sometimes on the internet and forums and, and conversations like we're having, there can be a pretty liberal use of words like avant-garde and, yep. surre- and surrealist about some shows. Like, you know, yeah. <clears throat> I remember like even early days of Two Year Eternity, some of the, like, the message boards was this is avant-garde at its peak and it's like no it's not like it's no. it's a little it's out there it's it's very uh, you know uh, i can't even think of the word now but like it's it's very thinky and thoughty but it's still very grounded the show is not at all like it's it's completely always bending upon itself we're talking about two year eternity or sunny boy now Su- sunny boy versus yeah. two year eternity okay. so like this the show truly is surreal yeah um I like that it gives you it gives you nothing while we'll, we'll simultaneously just lore dumping everything upon you. You know, it's it, yeah. it's it's kind of refreshing that way. They're, they're overwhelming you, but at the same time, like you can't really take anything for granted, or you mm-hmm. can't be certain of anything at the same time. They. I really like they do a really good job between each episode of kind of without even saying it. it's just something I picked on. Maybe it's my own head canon, but I think that's the power of the show is you you watch it and you kind of take what you see in it. Yeah. And I think that's why it, it can be it's a show bigger than it's so big because everyone can take their own things from it. And it's similar to To Your Attorney. There's a lot of, and very much like Neon Genesis. And I think we had talked about that when we had first watched uh, or episode one mm-hmm. uh, or two is major themes of depression and, and losslessness. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the the opaque and the unknown. It's it's very much a brainchild. And I think it is, I, w- I, was, I was unsure, but the writer of ReZero is very heavily involved in this. I think he said that at the beginning. And... It is clearly fucking obvious the dude went from, like, the ideas that maybe might not have worked in ReZero, he threw into this thing. Okay. Because they're very similar. You know, ReZero is very much, it's like a waifu fest, you know, but it has all this dark content and, the you know, like, just dissecting the, the human emotion and experience and all that. V- very to your turn. It's a good trifecta, actually. They kind of cover their own bases in different genres with similar messaging. I, I was going to say it's funny because... They cover some of the same themes and explore some of the same content in To Your Eternity and Sunny Boy, but it could, they could not be more different shows. Yeah. You know what I mean? The approach is so different. Um, I'm going to let you keep going, but I, I will just say on this note, the only note I had in my note this week's, for this week uh, on Sunny Boy was like, this is almost like Avatar if Avatar was a completely different show. Uh, Avatar The Last Airbender in mm. that there's usually a message um, it's obvious. It's obviously an avatar. It's much more linear and family friendly and obvious and you know uh, wholesome. But but it feels like every episode is saying something, mm-hmm. um, and it has that in 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 common uh, with with Avatar. It's obviously uh, quite a bit more dark. But I always feel like I walk away from every episode. Well, sometimes I walk away with a big fucking question mark. But <laughs> um, sometimes I'm like, okay, I think I know what they were trying to say. I've, all I've got is questions because this is the problem. I, I tried to catch up. I waited too long to catch up, so I, I you know, I binged it. I'm 100 percent going to be doing a rewatch very oh, shortly. Dude, me too. I have to. 
Um, but because there's so much, but so sorry, so I, I completely got sidetracked. But the thing, one of the things I have noticed in the show is, you know, they really, they really hit home. Like, there's time is kind of not really a thing. Like, it's just you know, time is clearly moving in one direction. It's going up. It's going down. Like, it's 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 all over the place. But it feels like when an episode ends and it goes into the next one there's no three weeks later or two weeks later it's just like an unknown yeah. amount of time yeah. yep Unspecified from time and from place. episode one to episode two and so on and so forth and you kind of have to the first 30 seconds to like three minutes sometimes is like trying to like put the puzzle pieces together Take like okay bearings. what has happened okay who's here how are they communicating with one another you know and great characters like really 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 well written characters like mm -hmm. very real clear like already multi-dimensional just a few episodes yeah, yeah it's and you know like the little easter eggs and 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 the way they just will introduce a major theme in an episode and then that's just going forward you know that's that's what that is or they'll just leave it you know like the way they introduced the um the power item the holdover power items yes that was that was introduced within like a 20 second yep. clip or scene and then they don't really fucking talk about it till like again like an episode later at one point and you're like what it's <laughs> like... um i'm sure you know uh just to in inject like uh on, on that note about the holdover power items like it's shit like that and like the intros like you said they don't tell you how long it's been or where you are mm -hmm. um they make giant plot devices appear with little to no explanation like we talked about um, pandering to the audience and insulting the audience. This show demands that the audience keeps up. It's like, yeah. hey, a lot of this is going to be ambiguous and over your head, and that's okay, and open to interpretation, and that's okay. The rest of it is a, is supposedly going to be linear, but like, keep your fucking eyes open. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's like, it's it's not making anything easy for anybody, and I mm -hmm. think that I got to earn it. Yeah, I think I love that, but I also think like I could see a lot of people being like really turned off and being like, I don't understand what's happening. This isn't fun for me. You know what I mean? Like I I can picture this not being a smash hit for everybody. But um, I don't I don't think that's its intention. Like there is not going to be a second season of Sunny Boy. I guarantee that. Yeah, I don't know what the hell. I I genuinely believe this is going to be a closed circuit. It's going to leave questions for years. Maybe they'll get a sequel thing like 15 years from now. If they do that, that's what I hope they do. It's just in the back of our mind. Like, this show truly is something special. And I feel like we've been saying that a lot. Yeah. But 2021 has been an absolute heavyweight year. Like, it's a record year for phenomenal shows. Yeah. Um, and just what they present, like, the art style and... You know, like, they're, just, they're continuing to introduce new art styles and... You know, and just... It's it's be it's beautiful to say the least, but it's so muted. But simultaneously, it has the realism. It has the unreal. You know, it has like all the colors and the odd shapes. Like the kind of like the tech guy. Um, is it uh, Raj or Rajani? Yeah, yeah. Um, he you know he can just create his own inventions, mm -hmm. and like they're they're just there, and they have, they have their own unique look to him. Like the Amazon girl. Who you know the cats can bring packages from the other world or from yeah. our, our world like it's it's so creative and then the introduction of the wolf who is like um, the freaking uh, my, my guy finally his guy Tatsu from Elf's husband like I, I caught it and I was like oh my god I gotta tell Grant about this <laughs> I was like oh no, no no I need I need to I was gonna say you know if like I was gonna say to catch up you know there's someone in this show that you're gonna recognize but I was gonna be like no that's a dead giveaway it's the only yeah. voice actor we both know. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, yeah I, I was super glad for him to join, and I love the way they use that that character. Well, that last episode was, it's probably, it's funny, because, like, I've watched, you know, i watched all these episodes in the past, like, two days. Yeah. Because I watched episode eight today, and it's the one that I have the most questions about. Yes. Genuinely, like, and actually, so, the, the question I wanted to pose to you, to I've been, all day I've been wanting to pose this to you. Each episode clearly has its own theme, and it's almost in a weird... Like, it's a linear story to a certain extent, but each episode has its own... It's almost like vignettes, because they have, you know, the whole purposes of the world. So far, what would you say is your favorite episode? Because I think they are so independent and unique. Yeah. Like, they're almost like an individual movie. 
Yeah, you know? um, I'd, I'd completely agree with that. Um, I think that they're all really self-contained, and there's like this through line that kind of goes through the show, but it's not always clear. Mm-hmm. I think it's um, episode five. I, I could look it up if I wanted to be like a billion times. Or a billion Is that the, times. the movie theater one? Um, I think it might be the movie. That might be six. I mm. have it right in front of me, actually, so give me ten seconds. Um, I think the thing was that episode five, um, it just, in, in particular, it had a scene that I was like, really, it had like a moment mm. that I was uh, really in love with, and I'm just stalling for time while I don't triple check, because y'all will appreciate this. Yes, okay. Um, it's called uh, Episode 5, Leaping Classrooms. Uh, Nagara and friends use his power to survey new worlds in an effort to get back home. So this is when the whole class pressures uh, Nagara to use his power to go home. They're like, okay, hey, you ready? We're leaving now. Mm. Use your power. And he chokes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I loved everything about that episode because of how it ends later. Um, I forget like his uh, love interest's name. I don't know if you want to call uh, it. Naomi? Or yeah. Nozomi? Nozomi, yeah. The way she calms him down, she brings him to this uh, pier and mm, they go swimming the fishing. because she says she sees spirits in the water. Oh. Uh, th- like that whole thing, like the show, uh, we, we said this very early on, the show really uses sound extremely effectively um that has made that has persisted throughout uh all of the season and all the it'll episodes. scare the shit out of you sometimes yeah it's because there'll be no, there'll be nothing it's just it's just dialogue and then it kicks into a music an effective musical hit and you're like yeah. holy fuck <laughs> it's, it's so weird to see a show nail sound design so incredibly well when you're not used to taking that like because you take it for granted because a lot of the time shows are just sort of bombarding your ears bombarding you with stuff um yeah. there's a really great youtube video called the marvel symphonic universe uh that one of my favorite youtube channels called lessons from a screenplay has uh put oh yeah yeah and it went pretty viral at one point and it's anyway it's uh it's just this guy who does this like critical analysis of how marvel uses music and how they kind of fuck it up because they always always have a backing track to basically every scene Mm. now to be fair like the track usually it's like if if steve's on screen they have like a very muted captain america soundtrack in the back (laughs) and like Mm. it's a you know it adds depth and and whatever but i think his point was like they so rarely use silence that you can't often feel the weight of the dialogue um and then when there is weight they undercut it with a joke right Mm. which is the opposite of what this show does Uh, this show demands your attention it demands that you pay attention to every single word that the characters speak and they only use music to change the mood or to enhance the mood and they might do like one to two songs or backing tracks per episode Mm -hmm. for 23 minutes you get might get one to two songs which is obscene right that's just not that's not normal no, the episode he... kicks into like like the like the ending music. Yeah, to you know to just kind of a very effective way to signal the end of the episode to yeah. wrap up like a, a last line, which is again it it kind of just goes back to the original point of it'll just drop it on you. And you're like, oh, that's how they're going to end it, eh? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's it, yeah, very fair. But I know, okay, I know the episode you're talking about. So anyway, yeah, uh, the way like I, I I don't know what it is. It, it's my favorite episode. I haven't rewatched any of them yet, but. I think just watching him struggle uh, to perform and the anxiety that comes across with having people depend on you and then him being able to disconnect mm. with this person. And you know me, like I, I, um, I think in general romance is handled pretty fucking clumsily in anime. Big time. Um, yeah. You know, not to, and even in live action, it's just hard. It's hard to convince people to want two characters to get together despite half the weebs out there constantly shipping characters that have no right uh being together like a real genuine connection like it's hard to make a jim and pam right sure (laughs) like from the office and and even that you know it took years to do properly um but in this moment i was like wow this is really beautiful and then the way the whole thing was drawn that that whole segment of the episode on the dock in the water getting out of the water the dialogue they used mm. uh the backing track they used i was like this is when i was like this is a pretty special show i think that's when it really hit me um that was my like moment what about you uh i think it's the episode before it's the one with the um 
the uh, the Black Veil, vale, where oh like so, they're that was my second choice. <laughs> so it's Nagara, Nagara, and I'm, the Amazon. I'm blanking on her name. It's Moyo, uh, Moyo Bazi. I think or, so. Yeah, yeah. She they've been kind of bullied into looking into like the you know the bodies of why they're you know why they're just turned into like a black stone like they still have their outfits on yeah and they have their beef and it's it, it was one of those i think it was the first point in the show where i was like oh like she is one of the core cast you know i thought she was kind of they kind of set her up as a foil like in the yeah. previous episodes yeah. kind of because yeah. there's that weird there's that you know there's the whole episode where like everything was burning and they kind of that's when they were still setting up how the world worked with rules which are very effective episodes and were kind of slow going but they had to like really get that the rule thing like they had to jam that into people's heads yes you know they did it in the pilot but they had to like follow through with the second one again to like yeah. really hit that point home um but anyway so but the whole thing with the veils and you know just going in and the people just haven't like and it's so true is it, it was and it's weird because you know like just you know this is not a this is not like a, a covid tw- or covid 19 messaging no. but the but the years we've had this these moments really hit home because you know they find a way they they realize that you know the rules were people that want to be alone or people that are being ignored they go to this place of what makes them happy more or less or what makes them feel safe and they may and not they even realize know that they're right, isolating themselves, yeah. But that's the thing, too. They find out the thing. It's because they were isolating themselves, but it's because other people were isolating them. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the the pack and the group mentality did not acknowledge their presence. And it's just very powerful and very true. But, you know, they, they so they find their way into these veils and, and people are just like, like, leave me be. I'm yeah. by myself. Like, I'm, I'm guess happy. guess better here, right? And it's better here, and it's just like this is just so much kind of what we've been going through. It's just easier to be home and safe and secure, and knowing like you know like it is the self isolation. You know, it's yeah. you're being it, it, you know it's like I said, it's not. I don't think it was designed to go with the current climate of the world and all that, but it was just it it was very oddly topical, yeah. and just seeing their relation, mending their relationship, Nagara and and Moyo, um, and like she she's honestly my favorite character. Like, like the moment she has, and you can clearly tell, like, there's kind of like a, a small love triangle going on. Yeah. And, you know, like, but it's like, it's just, they're, they're high school characters written like real high schoolers, you know, like there's clearly, you know, there's clearly the moments where, you know, I'm trying to think of another show where it's high schoolers, but like they're more it's, mature. It, it's crazy. The relationships are grounded. It's like very what you grounded. were saying earlier about what we do in the shadows. This show is preposterous. Its entire, yeah. uh, its entire concept of the show is preposterous, but the people are so real, right? And, yes. and the way they feel is so incredibly real. And like just to touch briefly on the that episode you liked, it would have been episode four. Mm-hmm. What a great... You know, it's like a, I said, I think, last week in our post show, I, I just put the clip up, so it's in my head, about a part of me thinks like this is just such a passion project that these artists want to have the opportunity to draw cool shit, so they mm-hmm. find a way to get the story to take them there. And like, all I can think of is like someone having the idea of like, what's a visual representation of isolating yourself and depression and withdrawing from the world because you don't feel wanted? Just a black curtain. And that's this episode. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And you appear sort of dead to the world and no one really knows that you're just sort of doing your own thing and it's kind of comforting in like a weird, sad way. It's not necessarily a good thing, but it's also not necessarily a bad thing. You know, it's it's yeah. it's you're the lim- st- the limbo of it yeah. all. Yeah, you're in stasis. Yeah. Um it's yeah, super disturbing, but like what an incredibly effective way to communicate that message. And I think that you could probably pick any episode and hone in on something uh, that you identify with and um, that they represent to like that level of of just metaphor or whatever you mm-hmm. want to call it. But yeah, really, really adept shit, man. Yeah. And you know, uh, honestly, like I I I don't, I don't want to stop talking about this show. Like, there's just so many there's so many things, you know, because if this is like a finite project, you know. I wish some shows would kind of just take lessons from this. Like, yeah. you know, they all, like, that's the thing. Some of them have superpowers, some of them don't. What exactly is their power? Eh, they can kind of do this, but then it doesn't. And then it becomes that. Like, it's it's so fluid. Yeah. You know, like, it's very ever-changing and nothing is, you know, 
it's static and then it's non-static. You know, it's like it's it's always keeping you on your toes. It's like we you know we've said it a hundred times now. It's you have to you have to earn the show. You have to yeah. work with it. You know, and it's God, it's it's such a trip, man. It's yeah. genuinely genuinely a trip. Like it's. I hope it's uh, ultra ultra successful because. Uh, you know right like right now it's my favorite thing i'm watching i think yeah it, it's you know it, it's funny because it's in a similar boat as to your attorney like i knew i liked it from the get-go honestly the weakest episode is the pilot funny enough and it's it's yeah, a great so, pilot but yeah, as you watch it it's the week by far the weakest episode it's funny because i remember we talked about how strong the pilot was but compared to the rest of the show you're probably right yeah and even like the last episode i watched that's the one i have to re-watch as soon as possible because there's it's the first time where I don't know where they're going. Yeah, I genuinely, to, I have. Yeah, I need to watch rewatch it all. It's uh, it is it is definitely that kind of show. The question is like, do I rewatch it while it's still airing? Do I wait for the thing to wrap up? I don't know. TBD. It's a it's it's tough because like the problem I had was you know there was eight episodes and that was you know I was able to do it in a night and I feel like I got a good grip yeah. of everything. You know I was pretty pretty you know like clicked in. But that's a lot. I could only imagine yeah. trying to do like a fast rewatch of like fifteen or twenty episodes or whatever whatever it ends up being. But True that. it's honestly guys, if you if you just like to think and you know, be confused and be alert and aware, like Sunny Boy is the show for you. It's it brings out a lot of emotion. Yeah, not 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 to mention it it is beautiful to look mm. at. It is uh, such a specific um art style and every episode has an excuse to do something weird uh visually and they uh they're really really good at taking swings um i I love it and it's also a kind of a loose art style that is sort of relaxed Mm -hmm. just like the design language of the whole show um they're allowed to go kind of low tech sometimes And, like, just draw characters very, very simply. And it always feels like a choice and not laziness. You know what I mean? I think that was maybe intentional. They decided, like, all of our character designs and environment designs are going to be flat and 2D. um, And that way, you know, we always have time to do other stuff. I don't know if, like, they thought about it in that way or if it's just a coincidence. But it really, really works. Mm -hmm. Um, Similar show. No, not really similar at all. Um, I watched this show that a friend recommended to me. I think you would like it, Grant. I got a couple episodes in. It's called Odd Taxi. (laughs) (laughs) Here we go. All right. (laughs) Let's do this. Yes, you do. So so I'll give you a disclaimer, and I'll say spoiler alert, you know, like three episodes in. It is a 2021 show, so keep everyone listening. Keep that in mind. Odd Taxi, three episodes in. So spoiler, uh, spoiler warning. So... I, I want to add a disclaimer, though, because I was telling you, like, my Monday was just spent on the couch. And, like, oh, okay. I, uh, I I need to rewatch a little bit of it. I actually tried watching the pilot, and I, I what I realized was this was not what I was looking for in the moment. I was looking mm. for... I don't know what I was looking for. I was, uh, something lighter, I guess. Um, you know, I was, I was pretty tired, and I think just, like, the vibe of the show was sort of putting me to sleep. And then... It's very relaxed, very kind of groovy. Exactly. And then... Yeah. I came back later that day a little more energized, and I turned it on. I ended up watching three episodes. And I I realized, like, it wasn't just me. It Like, that's the show. Like, it's very, like... <sighs> like, yeah. take a step back, yeah. chill out... Um, yeah i love the music man you know it's it's very different from uh sunny boy um and and a lot of shows in that like it knows exactly what it is um this show is like it the pilot is good in that it sets your expectations i think Mm -hmm. and that it's like hey i know the show knows what it's doing and it doesn't try and be anything else and I don't know if I've watched something like this before that's so oddly grounded with such an incredibly peculiar choice for animation, like just the animal stuff. Um, but but it does work. It works. Like I, I'm yeah. not sitting here thinking about the fact that everybody's animals. I remember you you honed in on that early when when you started talking about the show. But it's just so it's just so disconcerting. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think my two biggest takeaways are probably three and they're all good they're all highlights um one is i like the soundtrack yeah 
Um, the show is vibing the whole time from start to finish. I really like the animation style, which I was kind of torn on at the beginning. Sure. Um, it's kind of like... I'm trying to think of another show that does this. I mean, I guess technically all animes do this. But they have a lot of two flat 2D backgrounds that you could tell they're animating on top of. Yes. That are just like sheets of paper. <laughs> And it's weird because everything is blurred. None of the lines are straight. It's like everything's painted. Yeah. And then the characters are drawn on top of it. Um, I think lots of animes do that. It's just this one's doing it in such an obvious and weird way. And every all the colors are kind of muted and dark blue and yeah. vibey. Um, Nighttime. Yeah, everything's at night. Which um, is perfect for a show about a taxi. You know? Like, yes. You know? Like it's... It was very... I think obvious choice but it's yeah. it, it's a smart one and then my last favorite thing is well it's two 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 uh last favorite things is that i have not seen an anime be this modern and topical in a not corny way the yep. not corny way part is in bold i've seen lots of animes try to be modern and topical and i hate it <laughs> um because usually modern and topical is like oh here's what high school is like and that's really not what i'm interested in um because well, Sunny Boy doesn't count because Sunny Boy is ecstatic and amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what I mean? A lot of the time when like when animes try to tackle like real problems, it just doesn't work because there's like a lot of corny, weeby shit happening. Yeah. Um, th this. Was what episode was it for you? What was the? Is like, it it's the, right uh... the pilot? I think like uh, and I think it's in every episode. But like I think they the the whole discussion about going viral in like a social credit. System, oh yeah. I was like Jesus, like we're so we're doing this, and then just the way they portray the use of smartphones and communication yeah. all throughout the show. I was like, it's weird to me to think that this hasn't been done before, but it hasn't been done before, mm -hmm. um, at least in the stuff that I watch. So. That was new. I like that we're deciding that the show is making a very bold, very specific choice to the to the audience. It's like, listen, this is what we're tackling. This is the setting. And it's going to be all about, quote, real stuff, unquote. And mm -hmm. lastly, probably my favorite thing of the whole show, other than the vibe, is the dialogue and the speed at which the dialogue is done. The characters are either cutting each other off or <laughs> they're giving each other they're starting the beginning of their sentence as the first characters on the last syllable of their sentence it's fast paced like comedic speaking it's like and real conversations though. it's like real conversation it's like yeah. what you just did exactly like yeah. people there's a there's an ebb and a flow and even when you don't speak the language you can see what they're going for yeah it's very effective i don't know if i've ever seen anything or heard anything like that in anime before um but it it, it was to totally new to me and and the voice like, acting too. The voice acting on top uh, of it, yes, but because uh, that's definitely a choice. But I have to feel like it was written that way too. Yeah, or, or yeah. who knows? But it it like it's it's consistent throughout, and it's really adeptly done. Uh, yeah, big big props. I will definitely continue to watch. I'll probably watch oh, them tonight. I'm so happy to hear that, Dave. I knew like I knew you would like it. It's it, they're honestly it's so funny because we're talking about all these shows right now. Obviously, to your attorney has ended, but I have. I think you and I have just been so spoiled this year mm -hmm. with all all the content, you know, and it's such a dirty word, but like there's just so much, so much good stuff this year. Like 2021, maybe this is just going to be like going forward for us, you know, like honestly, like I feel like if next year there wasn't, if there's only like one or two good shows, I think we'd be okay because we can look back on this year and the all the stuff that came out has just been like knocked out of the park good year to start an anime podcast <laughs> yeah seriously yeah. We, might have, we might have lucked out on that one starting on season four of attack on titan and pretty strong yeah. and then uh and then all this fun stuff that has uh that has followed but yeah a taxi great pick great recommendation yeah. never and i could confidently say never would have touched it without your recommendation just because yeah uh you know i don't even know if i've like I saw, like uh, you know, I, some people I I really uh, respect in that whole community give it really big props, but like I would have looked at the trailer and been like, nope, not for me. Um, the price of admission is it's a big toll for some people. Yeah, totally. Just solely based on it being animals, and there's a lot, there's a lot of shows like that right now that ha that put off a very specific vibe that I think have scared some non, some some non confident anime watchers away. You yeah. know, like I think B stars is the big one. I think everyone that's kind of just put like horny animals in everyone's minds, and yeah. it's kind of scared some people off. But, yeah. um, but odd taxi, it's ugh, tremendous. Yep, I'm uh, looking forward to to ripping through it. All right, man, I'm gonna hand it off to you. 
Um, so I don't really have much. It's, it has been I can't like I finished up the Sopranos. Um, you I finished it. No, like season one. Sorry, oh, Jesus. Um, you know, I, but I actually think I'm gonna take a break. Oh really? Um, you know, because season one it ends. It ends very not poetically. It's just you can clearly tell like they were. I don't think they were sure if they were going to be renewed or not. Okay, maybe so maybe it's the vibe I got. Like again, yeah. it was so long ago. Who knows? But it just kind of wrapped up everything in a bit of a bow to a certain extent. Yeah. So I was like, okay, that's that's pretty fitting. I think now that I've rewatched the first season, Tony Soprano's in my mind again. You know, the key players are all in my mind. I think I'm going to wait till the movie comes out. Sure. I'm going to watch that, and then if I feel the need, I'm going to continue with the series again. I would eventually, because again, there's a couple seasons I have I haven't seen, so I will I will go forward. But I think this was like a fun little. It was just a fun little romp because you know you and I were talking about the, the movie trailer like a couple weeks ago, and it just kind of you know left a little bug in my, the back of my head, and yeah. it just kind of inspired me to watch Sopranos, and I did, and it was fun and exciting, and I think it's just one of those things where I think I'm okay just to put it down for a while, nice. and I'll, I'll I'll come back to, but but season one, you know, if if if, if the Sopranos was just that one season, it's still I still think it would be in the really? Hall of Fame. I I think so. Like it's. They 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 challenge so many topics and you know like the big thing is you know opening up and you know learn you know therapy is like a big thing like I think everyone should watch this and even you know come then, yeah. even back then like like even now people are still kind of fighting it's way more open it's easier yeah. to talk about now but it's even like then it was a huge deal um, you know, it's like good messaging and the writing, but I, like I said, if it was just that one season, I think it would still be in the Hall of Fame. It's just really? so well written, great performances. You know, like I'm gonna have yeah. to check that out, man. Yeah, it's because the movie comes out in a couple weeks, so it's oh, is, um, is it that close? Yeah, early October. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, Interesting. like I said, I might see the movie, just get all you know, yeah. get jacked up and excited, and then I'll rip through the rest of it. But uh, but for now, I think I'm okay. Um. If you're running out of stuff, I've got one thing if we've got time for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's uh, it's very different to bring to this podcast, but I was thinking about, like, you've uh, reviewed a couple of records on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've, uh, I've just finished up a multi-year, uh, um, a multi-year journey uh, reading a book series, and it's fitting for this podcast, though. Okay. Uh, well, right. sort of. Uh, it's probably you know the closest i can get to this podcast uh because it's from uh one of uh, japan's most famous authors uh named uh haruki murakami and he has this series it's the first uh, few books he's ever written uh, and it's uh the series is called the rat series hmm. and it's four books uh pinball 1973 uh hear the wind sing a wild sheep chase and dance 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 um, all and this trans- is a series? Yeah, it's a book okay. series. It got translated to English a long time ago. I think they were uh, mostly written in the, uh, the 80s and 90s. And uh, I just finished the very last book. And I think um, he's one of Japan's most famous authors, like just um, because of the way the books impacted people at that time. And mm. in the uh, mid-2000s, uh, he exploded in uh, North America. So... Mm. If, listener, you are, um, you know, looking for a book to read, I would recommend uh, giving Haruki Murakami a quick Google. He's got plenty of big hits. This is actually, these books aren't even actually his biggest ones, Um, but they are like his first ones, and that's just sort of what I decided to start with. So um, very quickly, what I'll say is that it completely, you know, I don't want to like get into the territory of hyperbole. But it totally changed my understanding of storytelling, especially in novel form. Hmm. Um, He's also the first and only Japanese author I've read. So I know that um, a lot of Japanese authors are very derivative of Murakami. But it's, you know, Grant, how I would pitch the books to you is basically it follows this guy in his uh, very late 20s, early 30s. And it's about him and his best friend. And I think in a nutshell, and this is apparently true for 
a lot of the Murakami books is that he seems to find a really good way to just explain how mundane <laughs> regular life is growing up mm. and make it not boring. And then he finds mm. a way to inject some weird shit um, to the perfect circumstance to put the protagonist through in order to force that person to grow. Um, and I think, like, the this particular book series really touches on just kind of how, like, lonely it can be growing mm. up. It's a little bit sad. I think, like, the whole thing, actually, like, <laughs> the last book legit bummed me out. And I was like, God damn. Like, oh, really? Yeah. It legitimately bummed me out, but I was like, I was just kind of stoked um, to have something to be bummed out about. Do you ever get that way? Yeah. Like, uh, it's kind of good every now and again to just remind yourself, like, oh, like, you know, when you watch, like, a really good episode of Sunny Boy, um, or when you finish reading a book, or when you see a movie that just sort of touches your soul in a way... Mm. that's what these books did mm. um uh so yeah if you're a reader check out uh haruki murakami check out the rat series i uh, i loved all four books um yeah i think it's i would say that uh in terms of genre i would say they're mostly dramas but he's really fa- uh, he's really famous for this uh a, a subgenre called magical realism and all that really means is it's a world based in reality except for one tiny detail uh, is different and breaks all the rules, but like they don't talk about the fact that it's magical. Hmm. Like, so like uh, I'm trying to think of like what I've like, never I've never heard of this before. Magical this realism, wild. yeah. Like, he, well, no, like the author in these oh, books, okay. like I, yeah, it's, I'm really interested. <laughs> yeah, no, I can I can lend them to you because I think I'm gonna see you soon. So, um, it's it's very interesting. Yeah, um, it, it's it's a really really fun read. Uh, I recommend it to everybody. It's a it's a good hmm. way to to branch out. Rookie Murakami, wow. the Rat series. Check that shit out. Wow, great, great pick, Dave. That's awesome to bring to the podcast. Nailed it. Yeah, man, good episode. Wow, solid episode. Action packed. Yeah. I think that means you're good as well, my friend. Well, oh, there's so there's oh, one more. I have been watching a show over the weeks, but I've been very I've been very hesitant to uh, to talk about it. It's an anime. Um, do you now, remember wait, an anime? What is that? An anime. What what is what is that? Sorry, go ahead. Do you remember a few years ago there was the Kyoto animation arson attack? Yes. In Japan? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think quite a few people died, right? Yes. I think, yeah, quite a, quite a few people died. Yeah. Um, very, unfor- like, super sad, like, the circumstances. But, I, you know, it, it had always been in the back of my mind. Like, I had never, I had never seen anything by them, you know, like, knowingly by, yeah. by this studio. Because apparently they were quite a big deal. Yeah. And... So there's this new, sh- a returning show by them, and it was very much advertised that way. And it's a show I've been, I've heard a lot about. I never really knew what it was. I see the ad adverts for it all the time. The show is called uh, Ms. Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Have you seen this? Have you seen the ads in Crunchyroll? Because it's always on the top banner. I think I may have seen the ads in Crunchyroll. Yeah. I have never. I'm almost through season because season two is running right now. So I kind of binged through the first season and and the second season um, predominantly over the past couple weeks. I've never been like so into a show and kind of like uncomfortable simultaneously. There is elements of the show, Dave. No, Dave. There there is. This is one of the horniest shows I've ever I have well. ever watched, and I watch it, and all I can think is like this is a lot. Like a lot. I all yeah. I think every time a scene comes up, I'm like, "Wow, Dave would fucking despise this." But you know, just because it's so it's so over the top. But on the other, like the flip side of the coin is the show is so fucking beautiful. Really? The anime, the Dave, the animation is probably in the top five of anything of any anime wow. I've ever watched. It's so bright and wow. beautiful and fluid, and it's funny, but it's. You know, it's it's like a reverse isekai. Like it's you know, like a dragon comes to this world and she kind of oh, okay. falls in love falls in love with this you know Ms. Kobayashi and it, like it's it's a comedy and it, it's it's very out there and it's kind of slapsticky and like I said, very horny. But each episode they find these ways to like really throw in like life lessons. Okay. And, you know, because it's kind of like a family situation, like there's a younger dragon, like a ja- dragon bait child, and okay. they come over and like they're in their human form majority of the time kind of thing, and they all they all live together. 
and and it's 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 so I watch it and I'm just like blown away with the quality of it. You know, like the the writing. It's what while was the it's, title again, Ms. Dr- Ms. Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Ms. Like Kobayashi's I said, Dragon but Maid. Okay. like Dave, there was there is because it's not a shonen, it's not a battle thing. It's very much a slice of life, like comedy, you know, fantasy for sure. But when it kicks into these like action moments. There's no show that even comes close to what they do in this show. It Jesus. it is like you just see it and you're like, holy fuck! Like there like there's no at no point does the animation look shitty. Like it's just it's just consistently good. And then they dial it up to like ten thousand. <laughs> you know it's and like there was like this uh, last week's episode was a big deal because there was like a straight up like five minutes straight of like you know two characters going toe to toe. They're kind of coming over their their difficulties they've had over with each other over the years and they're throwing down and there's nothing in 2021 that's even come close to Jesus. this fi- to, to the animation used in this fight scene it was how lo- far in are you uh i'm so season or sorry episode 10 just aired for season two which is like week to week right now okay and that's what you saw and you said like it's the best thing in 2021 it, when it comes to pure animation yeah yeah it, by far it's the definitive really? thing this year like I, I i might send you some clip like just some clips but like dave that's the thing miss kobayashi okay there's if i could take out all the stuff that it just you know that's that's not what you and i are into yeah this show would be a 10 out of 10 but the stuff that is in there is just like yeah it's so there's it's so obscene like there's some pretty oh, okay and this was some pretty made, hard pills to swallow and this was made by the studio that was so, uh yeah so, so sorry to the original point like i remember you know because i had i had i had never really heard of the studio but i knew they were big I had learned they were a big deal, and this was this was their show, one of the big shows they had done. And this second season is the first thing they've done since the arson attack. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of like their comeback. So I'm like I'm I I can honestly feel like the energy from the studio is like being put into this, like after everything that's happened to them. Mm-hmm. I would feel because they are firing on all cylinders. It's one of those shows. Anyone that's listening, like if you're into very gratuitous, like overtly, you know hyper-sexualized moments but at the same time like it's only like 20 percent of the show and the rest of it is just so good-hearted and good-natured and you know like the life lessons they teach like there's like a whole episode dedicated to the one character she just wants to go to elementary school mm-hmm. and she goes and she wants to be along around the rest of the humans and she learns like you know like like it's just they go on these adventures and it's all like everyday stuff it's so again this is a big theme this episode we've been talking about it a lot is the grounded nature of everything yeah it's just regular like they go over the the mundane life and there's a recurring joke that like you know because technically like toru like the main character like the dragon said dragon maid mm-hmm. she's from the chaos dragon faction in mm-hmm. her world and you know so she has like this hard edge to her and she comes here and like uh, you know uh, kobayashi works like in you know She's a like a nine to five, you know, tech grunt in Japan. In Japan, right? And she was saying like, "Oh yes, the corporate structure. Like my world has never seen something as evil as this." You know, <laughs> <laughs> like it just, it just, it, but it's genuinely funny. Like I watch and I laugh and I smile, and it's just, it's so warm hearted. And then like you know, there's just these moments where it's like, "Oh, that's kind of gross." But it's the action. Like when I said, when the action is on, it's like holy. Fuck! This really? would make other sh- other shows blush. I'm gonna I'm gonna put some together some clips that I can find on YouTube and send it to you. It'll be completely out of context. You're not gonna really know like the backstory of why these scenes are happening, but you're just just watch it as the eye. You can honestly watch it on mute. It's just eye candy alone. It's it's so impressive. But uh, but yeah, Miss, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Like I said, it's just, it's just one of those shows. It's like ah, do I bring it up? Is Dave gonna roast me for it? No, but no, it's, no. it's it's uh, it's uh, yeah, I, it's it's. It's so funny how common of a problem that is, eh? Because uh, Fire Force, another show with fire animation. Yeah. Yes. And uh, so much, so much weeb stuff. I think, like, you know, it's funny, like, we're probably due for a conversation about that sometime. Now is not yeah. the time. No. But, like, I, you know, I, I told you, uh, because I have a problem, one of the things I do now is I watch reaction videos on YouTube. Sure. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm a monster, and I don't know how I became this pit, this person. Um, but I, like, I, I saw this conversation between these react people that I watched that were coming off of, uh, 
you know, the first anime they ever watched is like Attack on Titan, right? Mm. Like how spoiled is that? And uh, now they're like checking out this little show called My Hero Academia. Mm. And the first thing they notice is they're like, what the fuck is up with this Mineta character? And it's mm. like sexualization, like of Momo and all these characters. And they're like, is this like a big thing in anime? And I was yeah. like, oh boy. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I don't know. I think like maybe at some point we're due for like a conversation about like the uh, just gratuitous over sexualization of characters and how exhausting it is and what message it sends and i'm not that you know like that isn't i don't think about that stuff a lot until i see it i'm like give me a break but you don't realize how common it is and how many people are watching that stuff it's crazy well if this show obviously shitting on this particular show i just mean in general no 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 no. and I, i feel like you know i've you and i have kind of hit this point at the end of the day as long as no one is being harmed, whatever you're into, it doesn't fucking matter. Sure, you know, yeah. like every, everyone is is more than entitled to what they like. You know, like I, I would never knock someone for being like, yeah, my favorite part of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is the, you know, the, all the oversized chest sizes. And like, the <laughs> you know, like every time, you know, someone's chest bounces, it makes like a little bouncing noise. Like, you know, stuff like that. Like some people, if that is your main takeaway from a show, like fucking right on, man. Like at least you're watching this beautiful show and, you know, people can fucking like what they like, you know. Of course. But I, I do think I'm at the point and I think this show has kind of open the door for me a little bit of you know sometimes maybe like fire force was really hard because it was it was different than this is it's it i think i still think fire force is a bigger offender um i i think it's a significantly bigger offender um but you know like all this stuff wrapped into the show is just so good and it's so genuine and it's so like ma- clearly made from the heart like the writing like i wouldn't be surprised like this must be written by a woman like just like how like the care and just because it's pretty much all exclusively a female cast you know but it's it's all realistic female characters and it's not really stereotypes and i think it's just like people all people can be different whether like gender like it doesn't matter and it, it, there's just so much care put into the show and I'm, I'm honestly kind of blown away by it like it's just been, this has been a very like you know we said this earlier this has been a very big year yeah. for us and i think this is another show that i'm super stoked i watched and you know so and the point i'm making is like going forward like sometimes like i can i can turn my brain off at those parts it's just like ah okay well this is a part of the show it is what it is I'm just going to keep, you know, wait till the stuff that I like kicks back in, you know, it's, yeah. if it's a show where it's the opposite, where it's 80% of the one thing and 20% of the other, like, you know, the stuff that I'm there for, it's only 20% of that. And that's a little different, but it's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to put together some clips of the show and just send them to you. And I, I, I'll be curious to see what you think, but it's, it's a really, it's a really good show. No, I think I'll probably end up, uh, taking a look at maybe at least at the pilot at some point. It's a, it's, you've given it a very strong ringing endorsement. So yes, I think sir. I owe it that, so. I think that's probably fair. Mm -hmm. And I think we can probably end there. I think so. Um, Thank you guys so much for listening. This has been a great episode. I think so, yeah. Action-packed. Yeah. Um, We are also covering My Hero Academia Season 5. We dropped that a couple of days before we dropped this podcast, usually. Um, So check that out if you're watching My Hero Academia Season 5. And if not, uh, we do this every Friday, or we drop this every Friday. So check that out uh support the podcast wherever you like uh do the appropriate social media thing on the appropriate social media platform and we will see you guys next week bye guys cheers